How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family. This video is going to be juicy, juicy, juicy. I mean like that kind of diabetic type of sweet, juicy, where you, you know, you, you, you I got to get, I got to bust out the biscuits. And you, you know, them flaky ones, and you, you know, you put, you know, your little butter, but then you just dump all that dripping syrup. I mean, when you pick it up and run down your arm, all oh, this video is juicy. Oh, True Royal about to deliver. And um, I have a bonus picture. And when we get there, we're going to... Um, have a very edifying conversation with Trump because there are some things that Trump want to reveal to the royal family first. And we'll see if we can um, help Trump out. Now, <clears throat> we know that Trump, it's been what, now going on two weeks that he made a complete fool out of himself you see that title that i have there he um made it real hard for the his staunch supporters to come up with something unique to cover his dumb ass you know they trying to use that you know he you know what well, he tried to use it saying he was being sarcastic and then the very reporter that he was looking at, he was like, well, when we were, when I, you know, made that comment about bleaching and injecting it in the body and the lights and all that, I was looking right at you. And that reporter said, I wasn't in the room, Trump. Now, as I'm, I'm stalling a bit and allowing y'all to go run and get your shit, um, these videos, these two videos that I'm going to play, Play, pay attention to the inflections in everybody's voices. Pay attention to body language. All of that. We good at that, my royal family. That's why I encourage the royal family to let y'all know, us being the chosen ones, we are empathic. And we need to start using our first eye, not our third eye, our first eye. All right. And we feed off of each other and we can draw from each other and reveal many things. We are deep thinkers. So, you know, we, you know, Trump, I just have to do what I have to do. And, you know, when we get to the bonus picture, maybe it explains some things, you know, and we, we shall see, you know, how we're going to handle this. So, Trump, you know, you made it really hard for your folks to come up with the right lie, um, they just, you know, they're dumbfounded. So um, let's first get into this first video. We're going to go back a little taste on how his folks get down. Please pay attention to the inflections in voice, eye movement, gestures, whatever. Red flags now for the malaria drug President Trump has repeatedly touted to treat the coronavirus. A new study linking that drug, hydroxychloroquine, to a higher death rate among patients. The drug has been approved for coronavirus in limited cases. Medical professionals have repeatedly urged caution, saying let's wait for more studies, more data. But the president and his allies at Fox News aren't known for patience or for caution. The FDA also gave emergency authorization for Hydroxy, chlor chloroquine, we're having some very good things happening with it. It's shown very encouraging, very, very encouraging early results. This drug that you and I have talked about, hydroxychloroquine, talked about it with Dr. Grace, is already being used. And 
one patient was described as Lazarus getting up after after he was he was like on death's door and they started getting a protocol of hydroxychloroquine at Lenox Hill and it's suddenly like Lazarus up from the grave that, I mean th that's a, an actual case watching people in the media talk down a potentially life-saving medicine because a politician they don't like has endorsed it is probably the most shameful thing I as someone who's done this for 29 years have ever seen hydroxychloroquine is a very safe drug it has been given to tens of millions of individuals in the world since its approval we have uh, purchased and we have stockpiled 29 million pills of the hydroxychloroquine. 29 million. Uh, a lot of drugstores have them by prescription and also, and they're not expensive, uh, also uh, we're sending them to various labs, our military, we're sending them to the hospitals, we're sending them all over. In their protocols, doctors have protocols for doing certain things. They don't even mention complications from hydroxychloroquine because they're so uncommon. On their webpage, the FDA is offering a generic guidance to manufacturers on how to produce hydroxychloroquine. So we, the hydroxychloroquine is something that I have been pushing very hard. I got the very early approval from the FDA. If things don't go as uh, planned, it's not going to kill anybody. It will be wonderful. It'll be so beautiful. It'll be a gift from heaven if it works. If some other person put it forward, they'd say, oh, let's go with it. You know, what do you have to lose? There's a lot of stuff floating around about the hydroxychloroquine. Very good. And the media seems to be almost rooting for it not to work. Things are happening. It's a, uh, it's a, I haven't seen bad. I've, I've not seen bad. And one thing that we do see is that people are not going to die from it. So if somebody's in trouble, you take it, I think. And it's being I used worldwide. Well yeah, and it's being used worldwide. This study done by a reputable center, double-blind, randomized trial, showed that there was an improvement in outcomes in patients that took the hydroxychloroquine. It's not a yep. panacea, but you have to respect data. In my open, I, uh, I put in a sound of the woman who was a, a Democrat from Detroit, a, 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 a Michigan representative, who said, you know, thank God for Donald Trump even mentioning yeah. this. And yeah. Once I got on the hydrochloroquine, uh, hydroxy, I was fine. Well, well, you're open to a spot on. Is there it, something it, it's else politicized. In the, in the... No, it's just come on. It's uh, it's like the never never Trumpers. It's like oh, if he's for it, we got to be again. It. I've seen things that I sort of like. So what do I know? I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor, but I have common sense. Joining me now to discuss CNN chief media correspondent Brian Stelter and cardiologist Dr. Jonathan Reiner. Doctor, I, I want to start with you uh, and about this study. Now, this is one study, and if my understanding is right, it has not been peer-reviewed. But if nothing else, it should tell us uh, we should not try to play doctor on TV, uh, whether we're the president of the United States or we work at another network, that we should wait and study data. What is your takeaway from what you've seen? Well, the problem is that we don't have randomized clinical trial data. Uh, this country has a, a long history of approving drugs only when the uh, uh, data in, that comes from trials which are designed in, in very careful ways to uh, provide reliable information show that there is substantial evidence of both safety and efficacy. And we don't have it for this drug. Look, I, I desperately want this drug to work. It would be fabulous. And, and the president obviously is interested in a quick fix here, but medicine doesn't lend itself to quick fixes. We rely on data, and data where we randomize people to either receive a placebo or the active drug, and we don't have that. The VA study is a small study. It does suggest harm in one of the hydroxychloroquine arms, uh, and really no evidence of benefit, but it's not randomized. Uh, it only had men. Uh, a relatively older age group, so it's not a great study, but none of the studies are great. So we really have no significant data set that really shows us whether this drug is effective and quite, quite a bit of circumstantial data that points in the opposite direction. Points in the opposite direction. And Brian Stelter, that's the point about the responsibility of our business and the president, but uh, we can only speak, I guess I can only speak for our business, I don't speak for him, in that, uh, as the doctor notes, uh, we need more data, we need more evidence, but in anxious times, people sometimes do look to people they trust for guidance, and we know there was a run on this drug. 
Yes, and the millions of Americans who use this drug for approved purposes, including my wife, people who have autoimmune issues and need this drug, became worried they wouldn't be able to get it because of the drug pushing that was happening on Fox News and from the White House podium. You know, we, the president yesterday was asked about this new study, and he said he hadn't seen the report. And that may be because Fox News is barely talking about it, because it doesn't fit the narrative that was being promoted in late March and early April. But recently, Fox has moved on. They've stopped talking about this drug and the, the hope that it could be beneficial. They've moved on to other quick fixes and other pro-Trump narratives. You know, this network, these stars, they think they're helping the president, but they're actually hurting him when they push these narratives. And ultimately, they're misleading their viewers, and that's why it is so troubling. Why would we ever think a Fox News star or any president should be promoting a drug? It's outlandish. It is outlandish. Uh, to be fair, though, uh, Dr. Reiner, uh, the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, a Democrat, did say, let's give this a try. The federal government sent him some a, 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 an inventory of hydroxychloroquine, and New York did a limited study. And then they've sent the results now of some patients, like compassionate care, I think, is if a doctor's having trouble with a patient, you ask the patient, nothing else is working, do you want to try this? And it's up to the patient to do it. And they have sent data to the FDA now and the CDC. Uh, because that was taxpayer funded, eventually we have to see that, right? Yeah, and we will see it. Uh, there are several really good clinical trials that will answer the question, and probably pretty quickly. But there are all kinds of ways to use the drug. Do you use it? early on in the disease? Do you wait till people get sick? Do you use it in young people or old people? Which patients can't you use it in? So these are answers that we, we have to have. And we'll, we'll have them eventually, but we need the data before we recommend the use of this drug widely. We'll have them eventually, but it, I'll stick with the medical opinion for a second. Uh, doctor, so you're in a situation like this, a lot of things are being tested. How long? It takes months, correct? To know? Yeah, it, yeah absolutely. Look, I have a colleague who uh, uh, spoke to me from New York last week, and he told me about a patient who was sick, actually another physician, who was treated with uh, hydroxychloroquine, uh, as well as remdesivir and convalescent plasma, and the patient pulled through, and this, which is fabulous. But how do you know which of these agents or which agents in combination were responsible? The only way to know that is to trial them, and we have to do that. This virus is going to come back, and when it comes back, we want to be armed with weapons that we know work. Now is the time to get that data. Right, now is the time to get that data. And to your point, did the patients just recover? Did these drugs help them? Did, was it one? Was it the other? Uh, but, Brian, we know in the president's case, uh, sometimes he says things and Fox picks up the ball, but often it's Fox that says things and then the president picks up the ball. Yeah, that's absolutely right. We've seen that several times during this coronavirus crisis. Uh, the idea about the cure being worse than the disease, we need to reopen right away. These are narratives that have mostly started in right-wing media and then made their way to the president. And he was certainly influenced by all the talk about this drug on Fox News as well. But like I said, they then move on to different narratives on different days, uh, just trying to keep the audience's attention for one more day, I suppose. What would be more responsible is for Fox News stars and for the president's other media allies to emphasize what our Dr. Harris is saying. This is going to take time. We all have to be patient, no matter how hard that is. Well, I hope as quickly as they can, they release the data that New York sent them. It's a bigger group. Uh, we'll see if we yep. get that as well. Dr. Reiner, Brian said. All right, my royal family. So we see that um, Trump and his stop supporters along with um, Fox, Fools, and Friends, um, basically, it's like they don't care about the data or anything. Just very impulsive, and we'll just throw that out on the street. And basically, what they're looking for is that one pill that is a miracle um, drug. You know, to get deeper into the enemy psyche, these are things that one of the things that they are petrified of is growing old and getting sick. And as long as they have existed, which hasn't been very long, they are trying to find the literally the fountain of youth, you know, where they can live forever. Because these fools, um, 
you know, they have donated their body to science and say, you know, you can freeze me. And while y'all working on trying to come up with something, I'll come back. And that theory is from bugs, where you can put a bug, freeze a bug, leave it in there for hours, um, take them out the deep freeze, and they'll come back to life. So they're comparing themselves to a bug. You know, a bug is nothing more than a scavenger at the end of the day, but they consider bugs that they eat as a de delicacy. And so we all know what fox is all about. You know, um, where is that at? Well, yeah, let's go here. We already know what they're about. You know, it's a, you know, who, if any black folks is watching Fox intently, um, they, um, we know that they is on this shit right here, right here, right here. And, um, the Coons, or I say the enemy supporters, they love channels like this because they, what they do is they watch this to pick up brownie points. But what I like about Rona, since she has penetrated the entire, entire earth, it has revealed many things which we already knew about this country. And I repeat this very often. I keep saying, if you are on a platform long enough, you will reveal thyself. So we see this bantering sort of thing, how they feed off of each other. Now, you got to remember, Trump clashes with Fox, too, as well. But with these racist assholes they want to be the first to say aha i told you so aha i'm first aha you know that type of thing they want to get bragging rights you know trump you know like trump is the kind of person if he win at something he's not graceful about winning he wants to taunt you with it you know for as long as he feel like he wants to taunt um, a person and that's not very healthy to do to another individual um, he don't know how to humble himself. And then his followers, his staunch followers, along with, again, fox and fools, that's how they get down. Then when it don't play out the way that narrative play out, then we just are dropping and we ain't going to talk about it and don't fucking bring it up all, at all. You know, like with the bleach situation. When they confronted him with it in the Rose Garden, uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't know, uh-uh. Oh, he refused to take responsibility. Well, I've been on YouTube for years, and I have a lot of people that send me emails about this didn't happen and that didn't happen. And I deem thyself a responsible content creator. And I refuse to put junk out. I have the utmost respect for the royal family. So I'm going to research it. And I haven't said this in a while. Wherever the wherever it lands, it lands. So I might present something to the royal family and you ain't gonna like the ending of it. Or you may like it. I just follow it and keep it keep it core. Keep it core. Now I will admit if I'm choosing to be sarcastic, greasy, grimy, and messy, um, I, I, I would admit that I'll set the narrative the way I want, depending on my mood. Because I say often, I do videos on emotions. I feel like they come out better. But overall, on the True Royal family, and in my other channel, True Royal, I'm going to be responsible, especially when it's them stories that pertain to us and touch us a certain type of way. So now we're going to get into video number two. Now, this is the one, this is the one that going to really take it home. Okay, they already look like fools on the first thing. You know, trying to push this malaria stuff, you know. Now, what Trump did two weeks ago made his staunch supporters and these assholes look like a complete fool. So they had to come up with a way um, 
because they would have been looking funny. They had to come up with a way where it would work in their favor because, I mean, a child would even know like, oh, you don't drink or inject bleach or any type of disinfectant. So I can imagine behind closed doors, they was like, oh, fuck, how we going to get out of this? Now, this is where you got to be keen and just check it out and and how they bluff so-called tried to bluff their way out of it and every chance i would get if i would encounter one of them i would keep throwing it up into their face you know so check this one out this is real deep so they said the five oh yeah the five laughs off trump's disinfectant comments mm-hmm yeah, you tried to bluff. Ooh, look at Trump's face. Trump look, ooh, he look nasty. Face look like um, raw um, lunch meat that's going bad. He just look rusty all over with that fucked up ass hair. The White House is blasting the media, saying they took the president out of context. It's over Trump's comments yesterday about heat, light, and disinfectant. And here's what he said. So, supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And then I see the disinfectant, where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning along so it'd be interesting to check that so that you're gonna have to use medical doctors and here is the president reacting to the media coverage and saying he's not encouraging anybody to inject disinfectants i was asking a question sarcastically to reporters like you just to see what would happen now disinfectant for doing this maybe on the hands would work when they say that Something will last three or four hours or six hours, but if the sun is out or if they use disinfectant, it goes away in less than a minute. All right, Greg, I watched this thing live as it came in, and to me, I didn't think he was being sarcastic. It looked like he was just spitballing ideas to knock this thing out. What do you think? Well, here, there's a couple of ways to look at this. There are two, two things that don't matter and one thing that does. Was it, take, was it off the cuff? Maybe. Doesn't matter. Was it sarcasm? Maybe, maybe not, doesn't matter. What matters is that anyone actually believes that he was saying you should inject yeah. Clorox into people. I mean, 1,000 1, days with Trump plus as president, and we still have an entire industry mobilized by an offhand comment. How can any adult believe, seriously believe, that he was saying, hey, people should inject Clorox, Clorox into their body. I mean, I get wanting to believe that because you have a pre-existing condition to believe the worst about everything that comes out of Trump's mouth or to believe the worst about anybody, really. I would challenge the media one day to look at somebody they don't like and try to assume the best of their comments. But it's, it's, I can't believe that they're actually interviewing experts. So uh, just tell us, you can't put Clorox injected into your body, can you? I mean, people, it's, it, this is actually a new cycle. As other stuff is going on, this is hilarious. Yeah, I think Lysol released a statement <laughs> over social media. Juan, <laughs> can you try to be fair here? You, you cannot believe the president was telling Americans to put bleach down your, their throats. <laughs> I hope not, but I mean, that's what I heard, but I hope not. It okay. makes no sense, Jesse. I think, I'll Jesse, I think when, when you said spitballing, I, I think you're right. I think he was riffing. Uh, today, yeah. I thought he tried to get off the hook saying that he was being sarcastic. The press secretary said he was taken out of context. Well, you can't do both, you know, so you got to pick one. And the thing is, for me to see him it, at the White House in the briefing room saying something like that, and believe me, there was no gotcha question. There was no question at all. He was just, as you say, riffing, spitball. He just start, came out with this stuff. And I think it's, uh, to some extent, you know, for people who are listening to him, 
I think it's upsetting and dangerous. I just, I can't, I just, you know, Greg says it's the media, but I just think the president uh, needs to be presidential. And saying something like that, I think it invites disaster. Well, I'm having uh, Dr. Burks on my weekend show, and I actually asked her, you were there, Dr. Burks, do you think the president was saying anything dangerous? And Emily, she said no. She, she said he was probably, as he does, thinking out loud and trying to come up with a good idea and just talking to the person at DHS. Right. I mean, you guys, it's how Heather number one was killed in Heathers. I feel like it's pretty obvious <laughs> you shouldn't drink bleach or the like. That being said, Los Angeles and Maryland have literally reported that they've been inundated with calls, their public health agencies, of people inquiring about it. So, um, you know, who... Uh, who knows? But I think it's safe to assume, unfortunately, now that he has to clarify all of his comments. And I do think, however, that the president's continued comments at these briefings undeniably just offer fodder for his detractors to sort of attack. And, and then we discuss it in the news cycle. And it's up to his team whether at some point they're going to make the call. It's no longer benefiting him. Mm. No, I still think it continues to benefit him. But obviously, that was a big distraction, Dana from some pretty important news from the DHS Director of Science and Technology that outside in the light or in high temperatures or high humidity, it has a very detrimental effect on this virus. Yeah, I think one thing that, um, just setting aside all of this and this thinking about the science and some developments, there are some companies and scientists that are working on using UV light as a disinfectant for um, like an airplane, for example, or something that people would go through to touch, like when you're going through the TSA lines. Um, and if that is a development that could actually work, that would be a, a good thing, not just um, in regards to coronavirus, but for a whole host of things. So hopefully, if that development actually does come to pass, um, nobody is making fun of those scientists because we do want to have uh, developments here. Um, and I would also say, if, if I had to take a choice between saying that he was taken out of context, which I think that he was, or being sarcastic, I think I'd go with the taking it out of context, but the media is always looking for that. So mm -hmm. I, it's, it's one thing that the, about the media, but it's another one. I think the social media piece, like the individual people, and immediately there's memes and there's fun, and everybody jumps on it. That's going to happen if you don't have, you know, a really tight uh, announcement, but that's also just not who he is. He wasn't suggesting that people drink bleach, <laughs> but also these companies, it, they weren't, the companies weren't necessarily putting out statements because of what the president said. It's because if somebody does it, they'll get sued. So that's one of the reasons that you do that is because you have to worry about your own situation when the media comes after you next because somebody decides to do something with your product that was inappropriate. But you know what, Dana? I, I, I noticed in one of the companies actually was responding to reporters asking about it. So it was like the reporters went to the, to like, uh, the, the head company and say, right. yeah, can you, you know, whatever, uh, is this unsafe? So it was like, it was the next layer of the story. We also have to remember that when Donald Trump talked about sunlight and talked about the summer and the seasons changing, that was declared as non-scientific. Remember? Am I just remembering that? Yeah. The thing that's yeah, strange, that's though, is right. that why is Singapore right. seeing an uptick then? I don't, that's the thing. I just don't feel, I feel like every day we get, like today, we got yeah. six new symptoms from the CDC. We find out more that there's like actually, there's increases in Singapore. It's like hot and humid there. So I, I just feel like we still just don't have enough information. And we're five weeks into this and we all want to get back oh. to work and back to the city. Everybody could be indoors. Maybe the people in Singapore aren't social distancing, and maybe they're not taking it as seriously as we are. All right. All right, my royal family, let me scoop back here for just a bit. Let me see something here. Let me see. Uh, let me go back just a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. Mm, a little taste more. No, I'm going to leave it right where it is. Now, these fox fools is full of shit. And now what they want to do is, um, like, make it a big joke. Trump was not joking. Stop insulting our intelligence. He looked like a damn fool. The, the long, every day he gets up there um, be on the world stage and speaks. And what Trump was really trying to do 
is, <clears throat> see, Trump always tries to prop himself up like he's bigger than life. Okay, so he's dealt with something, he's dealing with something that really literally will mark him for life and it's aging him and it's affecting him. I'll say, now you got these experts around him that have a lot of experience and they're using words he's never heard before. So he's in more of a setting, a medical setting and um, he feels inadequate. So he wants to say something profound. He wants to um, outdo the experts. Now, when you are a leader, you have advisors. And a good leader knows how to utilize their advisors, whatever particular situation it may be. But Trump um, think he's smarter than everybody. So um, he's hovering over them like they don't have a clue what's going on. Now they can play with they can play what they want to play. The polls is down. People are not going to let this go. On top of the fact that um, they get up there and lie every day. You know they want to talk about um, China lying. This country lie every day about the true count of these people dying. You know he's coming up with these hair brain um, schemes and. You know, just get that magic pill, you know, pop it in your mouth and we can go on back to doing what we're doing. But look at the precision of our father. Um, there's a lot of um, benchmarks that have been fulfilled. Our captivity, we have came out of that. Then, um, that's 400 years. He allowed Esau to rule and reign for six days or 6,000 years, and it all come at once. And some people was like, why are you being so excited about it and all this kind of stuff? You Shit don't happen overnight. I've been seeing stuff happen overnight because a lot of us content creators have been talking about, wow, do you see what I see? Pertaining to karma in the enemy and the enemy supporters. I'll get deeper into that in another video. And as things is moving right along, Look at our father's precision. Respect the process. The enemy can't. They acting like they've been shackled down and in slavery. And then their leader um, is making them all look like a fool. So I think this dude dead center, because he always got something to say. I think they huddled behind the scenes and say, hey, we, you know, this this ain't a good look. So let's just you know, make it a satire and we'll just laugh it off and hee hee and ha ha. And basically what they basically saying is, okay, the people that can't stand Trump, you, 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 y'all dumb enough to believe that, um, he, he meant what he said. He was just playing. No, he wasn't playing. He was dead ass serious. Like I said, he was trying to be profound. He trying to outdo the doctors. Now, um, I said that, you know, I had a bonus photo that I'm going to share with the royal family because there are some things that Trump wants to reveal about thyself. So we're going to see if we can help him out. Um, now, my royal family, I'm being serious. Trump has an inner woman in him. And he's really been struggling um, to just, you know, let it all bust out on the world stage. Now, when I, I talked to him, I said, this is the best time in your life um, to just, you know, lay it all on the table. And I know it might hurt your wife a little bit and, you know, shock your, your children. But um, just, you know, put on what you got to put on and, you know, do what Bruce Jenner do, you know, and let that all out. You know, we, we, we fully support you on this, Trump. Keep wearing that. Keep going out on the world stage. And, you know, and somebody, you know, saying some grimy stuff about, you know, what you're wearing on a day-to-day -day basis, I'll back you up. I'll be right there. And I'll be like, leave him alone. 
you know, this has to happen. This whole process has to happen. That's why Trump been, you know, having issues, my royal family. You know, um, he was going to reveal this right after the impeachment hearings and stuff. And then, damn, all that came in. And, you know, it's all up under his suit. That's why he looks so big. And um, then um, when I talked to him, I said, it ain't a good look. You know, we're dealing with um, dealing with this um, globally. And I understand that you're antsy about certain things. And, um, you know, like he don't like being pent up like that. You know, um, I know he's going to be going to Arizona, I think, next week. And I told him, you know, it's kind of warm down there. It'd be good, you know, wear your red, white, and blue and your gold or whatever. Because, you know, this is the golden suit. And, you know, I guarantee you, Trump, people will fully understand why you do what you do. See, people have inner childs in my royal family, or any inner gangster, inner hoe, inner pimp. You know, I got an inner pimp in me, you know, on Facebook, I'm the pimp queen, run me my money. You know, that's my alter ego, you know, and I have to let it out. So we have to understand that this is a hard process for Trump, given the fact um, of his age, because this was very taboo. And, you know, he had revealed to me when he was in military boarding school, that's when um, he was really, you know, exploring himself even more, even though his mama did catch him in the closet. Because she said, what did I raise? Oh, Lord, he was a handful. Now we know why Trump is having all these antics, lying, deflecting, and all of that. So if anybody going to go vote, we need to keep him in office. And I'm going to keep advising him and keep encouraging him to wear his um, outfit. You know, he got one. He don't wash it. And I told him it don't matter because your folks back in the day didn't wash their ass anyway. Ain't nobody going to notice. Just throw a little perfume on the cologne and keep it moving, you know, and be brilliant. Display to the world your high IQ. And, um, you know, keep vaping that, um, that Lysol. Keep washing your ass in that ble- um, bleach, pure bleach trunk. Keep it in your hair. Rinse it in your mouth. You know, drink it down. Slap it. Roll it. Whatever your thing is, Trump. So um, I'm supporting this, my royal family. Now, everybody got their own opinion. I know y'all looking at me real funny. I don't give a damn. Trump then slid me some coins. And, you know, sister got to do what she got to do. You know, I got my own damn bills. So don't be over here judging me, you know, talking behind my back. You talk right in my face. I support this. I support this fully, you know. Now, Trump, I, you know, I don't support you encouraging other people to do these foolish things. But if you want to destroy yourself, destroy your family and all of that, do that. I will advise you on all of that, you know. But before you, you know, fuck yourself off, I need to see them policies because I need my name on it, you know. Because I'll know how to appropriate that millions that they're going to get from your ass once you croak. I know how to appropriate the funds and stuff. Your children to get 1% and um, they got to chop up that 1% amongst themselves and then the rest of them going to go to the royal family. So that was just a big reveal my royal family that Trump's inner whole, inner woman, inner bitch, uh, you know, had to come out. So he's truly being sarcastic at this point. He's like, yeah, I'm going to show out. What you going to do now? So we have to come up with a name for you, Trump. Trumplina or whatever. So I'm just asking the royal family, do you have a name for Trump? He needs a female name. And um, are you cool with this? You know, um, you know, just let True Royal know how you feel. So um, it's going to be all right, Trump. So my royal family. Render your voice with your beautiful, divine words. And as always, my royal family, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said, Ashe.